Put your worries outside the door. Let them fill you with the Holy Ghost and everything that is not of Him. Let them do with it. Cause heaven is right above you. God is willing to download to you His Spirit abundantly just for you and me. Jason Ashwella Calvary Teach you a dance. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. Turn around. One, two. Hosa, 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 hosa. 
to you, or be, before I talk to you, for those who missed last week's service, I would like to encourage you to make sure that you get onto our YouTube page or your Facebook page and uh, participate in that service where we closed the demonstration of power. And I want to say, the, the fact that we have closed the series does not mean that God has stopped demonstrating his power. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's keep believing God. Let's keep pressing in. Amen. So I, I know that I'm, I, I do teach some fairly long series sometimes. So today I'm not teaching a series. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to try. I, I'm normally a teacher, but I'm, I'm going to try and preach. And, but because I don't make a good job at preaching, I call it treaching. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so if I don't do a good job, don't worry about it. It's, uh, I'm learning to treach. So I want to talk to you very simply on a message I've titled, entitled Pursuing the Assignment. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, this is what the Bible says. God says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So we are talking about pursuing the assignment. And, and God is saying that, you know, Jeremiah, you, you, you may not understand. I'm calling you something big. I'm calling you something great. You may not understand it, but I want you to know that bef when you were in your mother's womb, before I even formed you, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I want you to understand that God has always had a purpose for each one of us. And it is our role to move into what God is calling us to. Now, somebody who say, what exactly is this thing you are calling purpose? You see, purpose is the original intent in the mind of God the creator that motivated him to create you. You know, there is no one who is purposeless. There is no one who is an accident. You see, God had you in mind. Before he created you, he had a purpose in mind. And that purpose is a definite purpose that God had. But and for you, that the pursuit of the fulfillment of that purpose, the reason God created you, is what we call your assignment. Amen. You see, my assignment, your assignment, his assignment, your assignment is really pursuing the, what God had in mind when he created you. And so to, to Jeremiah, he says, you know what? I ordained you a prophet to the nations, but not all of us are called to be prophets. There are things, specific things that God has created you for, that you're a solution for. And God's saying, this is what I created for you for. This is my purpose. This is my intention. And you, you have an obligation. You have a responsibility to pursue that, to pursue the fulfillment of that purpose. And that is your life assignment. So today, I want to challenge each one of us to pursue God. 
go the life assignment that God has for us. You see, your assignment is a specific problem for which you were created as a solution. You know, many people look at themselves and they think, oh, you know what? My father told me that I am a problem. And they see themselves as a problem. I want you to understand it doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter the circumstances of your coming to the earth. But God says, before you were born, I knew you. I ordained you. You are intentional. None of you is an accident. You are not a problem. But as a matter of fact, you are here by divine assignment. I have a purpose for you. And that assignment is so that you be a solution. I don't know who you are. You may be thinking, oh, you know what? I, I always mess things up. I am a problem. No, you are a problem. If you see yourself as a problem, it's simply because you have not entered into your life assignment. Because as far as God is concerned, then you are created to be a solution to a problem. You see, you can be a problem, you, you can be a solution rather to someone or to something. For example, among the many things that, that my wife is, she is a solution to my sense of directional disorientation. If you put me in the street, I'm more likely to go the opposite direction. Even if we, if we, we came a certain way and I want to redress that, I'm likely to drive the, exactly the opposite. And I think I'm going in the right direction. So, so God put here in my life because he, he knew I needed somebody to deal with my problem. So you are a solution to somebody. But you see, here is the problem, here is the situation. Then you see, while you are assigned to be a solution to something or to someone, you need to understand that you are not assigned to be a solution to everyone and to everything. And because you are not assigned to be a solution to everyone, to everything, some people may not appreciate you. So, and yet we, we get hung up by those who don't appreciate us. They don't know that we are a solution because we are not a solution to them. They may see us as a problem because we are not created to be a solution to them. But you see, when you find people seeing you as a problem, it may be that you are trying to solve a problem that you are not created for. So you may have to ask yourself, Lord, am I in the right place? Am I in the right situation? Why are people tolerating me instead of accepting me? So you have to understand that not everybody will accept you because you are not a solution to each one of them. Amen. Are we together? Amen. I am not assigned to everyone. Hallelujah. So don't expect, if you are a man pleaser and you want everybody to like you, life is going to be difficult for you because see, people who don't see you as a solution to their problem, they will never appreciate you. And yet you want their appreciation. And then it creates a problem for you. So you get, get it in your mind to say, not everybody will be happy with the way you do things. Just like in business, not every client will be happy with you. You may do the very best you can, have the best product, and you'll see people still complaining. And they go to somebody who has an inferior product, and they love them to bits. And you say, what the heck? It's because that inferior pro product is their solution. Your excellent product is not their solution. So when you understand that, you understand that there are some people who are going to appreciate you and others are not going to appreciate you. But don't even get angry with them. Don't be bitter with them because you are simply not assigned to them. Are we together? That's just for free. In John chapter 15, 16, Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So Jesus says, not only were you created for a purpose. He says, I redeemed you. I chose you for a purpose. I appointed you for that purpose. And I want you to go and bear fruit. And that your fruit will remain. In other words, God chose us with a purpose in mind. That we may bear fruit. And he appointed us to accomplish certain works. And God's intention is that our work will live on. God thinks about significance. He thinks about the work that you are doing. The fruit that you bear should be fruit that remain. Whether you are in business, whether you are in sports, whether you are in education, whether you are in the pulpit ministry, God wants your fruit to remain. When you are in your assignment and you are pursuing that, there should be things that remain. There should be evidence that your fruit will remain. 
So, as we, but as we go into that work, as we are, are in that assignment that he has called us, that he has chosen us for, we need, we need the help of God because God doesn't call you to do things that you can afford to do, that you can accomplish on your own. If it's a calling of God, if it's an assignment of God, he always assigns you to do things that you can't do so that you have to depend on him. You see, if you're attempting things that you can handle in your own capacity, then I can assure you that's not the call of God. It may be something necessary. It may be something good, but that's not your assignment because the assignment that God has for you will scare you. That assignment, he will call you to, achieve, to try and achieve things which people call impossible. But he, he is willing to help you. He is willing to support you. You see, you were designed with your assignment in mind. You are well qualified for your assignment. You are wired for it. You are anointed for it. Everything in you, when, when you get into that sweet spot, into that assignment, it's like everybody will say, you know what? It's like you are in your, in your sweet spot. This is, this is you, it's like you are flowing. Though it's difficult, it's, it doesn't look very, di very difficult for you. Others will struggle with it, but you don't struggle because you are in that place where God has designed it for you. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 4 verse 7, the Bible says, Yet grace was given to each one of us in proportion to the measure of Christ's gift. So when you, God calls you, when God gives you an assignment, he graces you. He gives you a grace. He gives you an ability, a grace that he helps you to walk within that territory, to walk within that sphere of your assignment. You see, I call the area of your assignment, I call it your spiritual jurisdiction. You see, so God gives you grace. He gives you authority to occupy territory according to your spiritual jurisdiction, according to the place where he has called you. So when you are operating within your spiritual jurisdiction, within your area of assignment, there is a grace provided for the fulfillment of the assignment. You can sense the grace of God. You can sense that God is helping you. You know what? Right now when, when you are talking, you see when you, the grace of God is there, when it hangs on you, things are much easier. If you were to ask the manumas or you ask the dubes, you'll find that one while they were serving here, while they were doing here, while they were here, even when they're going to work, even if things look difficult. But you see, they just had that, that ability to flow with it. But the moment and the other assignment came up, every day became like a grind. You are going to work, you're saying, do I really have to do this? Do I really have to? Because the grace is lifted. Because the grace is for an assignment. The grace is for the area, the sphere of your influence. Because the moment God says, you know what, I have lifted you from this to there. Your grace now is for that area of assignment. So for those of us who wanted to stay longer in that beyond the place and the place of your calling, you begin to struggle. And you look back, you say, I don't even understand. I used to do this. I, I remember my wife and I, when we were deployed to, to, to Blauai, we used to travel 500 kilometers every, I mean, actually 1,000 kilometers every weekend to go and minister. We didn't even feel the pain of it. But the moment we were told, your assignment is almost over the last two months, it was a nightmare. I mean, every kilometer we were driving, we were feeling like, oh, this will kill us. And we, but we could not understand. I mean, when people were complaining. I, I hear people around here saying, oh, you know what? I, I can't come to church because it's 40 kilometers away. And I would drive on a Friday night after finishing work. I would drive 500 kilometers to go and be in an all-night prayer. And then on, on Saturday, begin to do training. On Sunday, we would preach in Blauayo. And then when we finish the service in Blauayo, we would drive to Gwanda to preach another service at 2. And when we finish at 5, drive back to Blauayo and drive to Harare. At 2 a.m., I'm, I'm in Harare. And at 8 a.m., I'm at work. But I didn't feel the pain because there was a grace for it. But the moment that grace lifted, every minute was painful. So you need to understand that when you are in that place of God's calling, when you are in that sphere, that area of assignment, the grace of God will sustain you. You said the will of God will never take you to a place where the grace of God cannot sustain you. If you are in a place of God's assignment, the grace of God will sustain you. Hallelujah. You see... One of the things I want you to understand is that you see your assignment is geographical. 
You see, God calls you to a certain geography, to a certain place. You, you know, I look at Pastor Tom Duchel, and I think, you know what, Pastor Tom Duchel, he God called him to, to, to Rhodesia, then which is now Zimbabwe, and to Africa, and he has done so well. And I, sometimes I look at him and I say, I don't think you'd make it in the U.S. because your place of assignment is here. And I look at people like T.D. Jax. Many people know T.D. Jax now where, when he is, where he is at the Potter's house, but most people don't know that for more than 20 years, he struggled in West Virginia in a little no one in North Town. The moment he moved to, 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 I think it's Texas now, wherever he is, the moment he moved there, he started his ministry blossom because your calling, your assignment is geographical. Once you get into that geography, once you get into that location, once you get into that place of God's assignment, you begin to expand, you begin to thrive, things begin to happen because you see the calling of God is geographical. You see, Joseph would not have been who he was until he got to Egypt. You see, Daniel could not be who he was until he got to Babylon. The assignment of God is geographical. So it's important for you to be able to understand, God, where is my location? Where is the geography that you are calling me to? You see, you need to understand that your location determines who notices you. Because there is somebody who has to notice you. You see, there has to be a prison, a prison jailer who notices you. There has to be a potiphar who notices you. There has to be somebody who notices you. And the person who notices you will determine the favor that will come your way. So geography matters because it determines the flow of grace and the flow of favor towards you. Hallelujah. You know, many people don't realize that someone who has a capacity to accelerate you on your assignment is always watching you. So you should be praying and say, Lord, there is somebody in the boardroom, there is somebody in my client base, there is somebody in the world who must notice me because they are my ticket to my assignment. They are my ticket to that contract. They are my ticket to my business thriving because the moment you connect with that person, I sometimes call them destiny helpers. The moment you connect with those people, your things begin to work. You know, I don't know about you. Have you ever met somebody and you thought it was a change, a chance meeting, but that person begins to open doors for you. Doors open, doors open. You may have been knocking on a door and nothing was happening and until you are, you are blue in your face and then suddenly you meet somebody and they say, oh, is this your problem? He says, why don't you call this one? Oh, I can call this one. And they start making calls and doors open because somebody has to notice you. But they only notice you in, if you're in the right location. Hallelujah. So geography matters. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in real estate, they talk about the, 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 the location, location, location. Because you see, the success of your assignment is, is linked to a geographical place. So one of the things you must ask yourself is, am I in the right place? Am I in the place that God has called me to? Hallelujah. Because it's a place where you, you, are, you can flow, where you can be more effective because you are wired for it. It's a place that has been prepared for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. Listen to what the Bible says. Acts chapter 20. Acts 20, 22 to 24. And now, this is Paul who is giving his testimony. He is telling his story about how he is pursuing his assignment. And we are going to look at Paul a little bit more to see how, he, as he pursued the assignment, he heard from God, he, he followed God, and he followed what God was saying. And we want to use him as an example. So this is what the Bible says. Now, compelled by the Spirit and obligated by my convictions, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly affirms to me in city after city that imprisonment and suffering awaits me but I do not consider my life as something of value or dear to me so that I may with joy finish my course and the ministry which I have received from the Lord to testify faithfully to the of the good news of God's grace so he is saying you know what I am I am compelled by the spirit I don't know what will be, become me but as I go I go to this place knowing that I am compelled by 
by the Spirit. I'm obligated by my convictions. I know this is the place that God is calling me. This is the place of my assignment. This is the place where I will thrive. So I don't know what will happen. I don't know how it will pan out. I take a, a step of faith. I take a risk of faith to move into that which I believe God is calling me to. Hallelujah. And then he says, because of the assignment, I do not consider my life of value or important. But my goal, my aim is to finish my course and to accomplish the ministry that I've been called to. Because you see, your life assignment is your ministry. Your life assignment is what God has called you for. And he wants you to press in until you can accomplish that for which he has called you. And that's what we call the pursuing the assignment. In Acts 26 verses 15 and 18, Paul is continuing. He's, this is another day and he's talking about his life assignment. And he's, so he, he's telling about how he encountered Jesus and how he gave him an assignment. So in verse, verse 15 he says of x26 so i said who are you lord and he said i am jesus whom you are persecuting but rise and stand up on your feet for i have appeared to you for a purpose i have appeared to you for a purpose you are not an accident you are an intentional creature you are there by my intention i don't know how i can put it to you but you see whoever you are wherever you are you are not an accident you know somebody may say i'm a product of rape. Yes, the circumstances that brought you into the earth may be unfortunate, but you are still a creature of the intention of God. God has a purpose with your life. Don't look down on yourself. Even your parents could have said, you know, you were an accident. We were done. We didn't even expect you. We actually even did everything to make sure that you would not be born, but you were born. But you see, many people get hung up with that fact to say they have the rejection because they were told you were not wanted. No, 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 no. You don't understand. The fact that your parents did not to want you is actually more reason for you to love God because God loved you, wanted you more than your parents wanted you. And he says even if they don't want you to come into the earth, I'm going to cause you to be born because I have an assignment. You are a solution to a problem in the earth. So he says, I have appeared to you for this purpose because I will make you a minister. You see, when you are pursuing the assignment of God, one of the things that God does, he makes you, he shapes you, he forms you because he is not just interested in the outcome. He is interested in who you are becoming. So he says, I will make you because he makes you. Whereas you pursue your assignment, God is molding your character. He's molding who you are becoming. He's molding you into godliness. He is molding you into a person who pleases is God who glorifies his name because the purpose of the assignment is not just to accomplish the advancement of the kingdom but to create a child of God who is mature, who is formed in Christ likeness. That is the purpose of God. As you pursue your assignment God is working in you to make you who he wanted you to become. Acts 26, 19-23 Then Paul goes on to say Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and through all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained the help from God, to this day I stand, witnessing to both great and small, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer and that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Listen to him. He says, I was not disobedient. I knew the call of God. And the call of God would give, cause me to have clashes with my people. But I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. As I pursued the assignment of God, as I pursued the purpose of God, I was not disobedient. I was laser focused on that for which God created me. And I pursued it. And he says, I was committed to it. And I, I pursued it. So we need to be focused. We need to pursue. And he says, as I went along, I received the help of God to this day. That's why I stand. Amen. 
So you have to understand that each one of us has a personal race to run. You see, while you are in that personal race, there may be obstacles, there may be challenges to completing the race. There may be Jews, you may be stoned along the way, you may have to bid farewell to friends, you may have to get into a place where you begin to, to start new relationships, but you are pursuing the purposes of God. I want you to understand that sometimes as you pursue the assignment of God, you may, you may begin to realize that you look back and your life is full of scars. Just like Deaconess Rufaro was saying, you know what, our lives are marked by scars. But I want you to understand that the attacks and the traumas of the past are, are efforts by the devil to derail the assignment of God. But you see, when I look back at my scars, I look back at the traumas of the past, I realize that this is just the enemy trying to derail me. Sometimes you get focused on the trauma and you begin to see, you know, some of us have become too psychological. You think, oh, I'm suffering pro from post-traumatic stress disorder and you build your camp there. But don't you understand that even by giving it a label and building your label there, you are staying in the derailment of the enemy. But when you understand that you see, having received the help from God, I stand to this day. You can throw whatever you throw at me. God has called me. Whether it is a business you have been called to, whether it is an innovation, whatever it is, pursue that assignment. Let them throw all the stones they want to, but do not allow the enemy to derail you. So we must maintain our focus. We must avoid distractions and be willing to pay the price for success because your assignment will cost you. You see, there's a price to pay. Hallelujah. You know, in, in my former life, I, my wife and I were running a fairly successful chain of dental outlets. We're doing well. When we closed the shop in pursuit of the assignment of God, a lot of our clients were saying, I mean, what, what happened? What are you doing? But you know, the assignment of God will cost you. But are you willing to pay the price? Hallelujah. But you see, your assignment requires total focus. It requires a concentration of effort. When you know that God has called you, when you know the assignment of God, you pursue it and you go after it like, like, like a bull terrier. And you say, I, I pursue. And once I hold it, I hold to it. I mean, think about Paul. Paul is stoned, left for dead. And you'd think, you'd say, no, no, I'm done with it. I'm not going to, to do this anymore. But he stands up, he, he, he just rubs his wounds, puts some oil, and he's preaching again. Why? Why? Because he would not be disobedient to the heavenly vision. He knew there was an assignment. He knew there was a call of God. He knew there's a price to pay. He knew he would be misunderstood, but he still stuck to what he felt God was calling him to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I want you to understand that your assignment is progressive. You see, you, you move from one step to another. God may be, you see, when God was taking Joseph towards the being number two in Egypt. Actually, it's, it's wrong to actually say number two in Egypt. The Egypt called him number two. But God never called him number two. If you listen to Joseph, when he explains to his brothers what God had done, he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Then he says, God has made me a father to Pharaoh. Not number two to Pharaoh. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. So Joseph saw his assignment as if he was higher than, than Pharaoh. He didn't look up to kiss up to Pharaoh because he knew his assignment. You see, when God has called you, when God has given an assignment, you pursue it, you know it's progress but he knew he had to pass through the pit. He had to pass through Potiphar's house. He had to pass through the prison. But those were not his destinations. It was progressive. It was taking him closer to the person to what God is calling you. Listen to me, child of God. You may be an entrepreneur. You, you start your business and you are focused and doing everything you can do. Do you know that one day you may be wiped out and you lose all the tenders, you lose everything. And the person that you trained the most will actually steal your business, steal your contracts, and you 
when you are wiped out. But you see, that does not define you. It's a temporal derailment. When you understand the call of God, when you understand the assignment of God, you say, you know what? These are occupational hazards. I don't stop at them. I'm not going to mourn about it. You see, when you know that you are in an occupation, for example, when, when, I, was, when I was practicing as dentist, I knew that I would be exposed to potentially contagious diseases. But I didn't quit my job because I could have a flu, I could have hepatitis, but I knew it was occupational hazards. So the temporal challenges that you encounter on the entrepreneurial journey, the temporal challenges you encounter, some of you are in careers which are so regulated that there are people who don't, you know, their careers, for example, when they're in the medical field, where people actually say, we don't want people to pass. We have too many, we have too many people who are specialists here. So they make it difficult. They try to block you. It's like you go through a maze to be able to get there. But listen, you can begin to mourn and, and cry, or you can and say, you know what, the, my, my assignment is a progressive. You see what they are doing to me, they are just thickening my skin. They are just giving me a tenacity to pursue what God is calling me to. See, your assignment is progressive. And each step may lead you to your ultimate destiny. You see, when David was anointed by God to be king, he didn't realize that though he was anointed to be king, his assignment would take him through Ziklag. He thought he was headed for the palace. But he had to pass through some caves. He had to sleep in caves. Hunted like a wild animal. But the assignment still beckoned. There's a price to pay for the assignment. Amen. You know, just a detour. People who are on assignment, you have to understand, they are contributors. They are not parasitic takers. People who are on assignment are producers. They are not consumers. You know, there are people who come to church and they say, ah, you know what, I, I don't know. You know, the, 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 that music was not good enough. Oh, this, uh, and the, that, that keyboard was out of key. They, all they do is to critic because they are consumers. But you see, people who are on assignment will say, you know what, if there's a problem, I'm going to volunteer. Or if there's a challenge, I'm going to, can, can I, what can I do? to help because they are contributors. They see this service as a product of the contribution of each one. I mean, they say, what is my role? What is my part in God's assignment? You see, people who are on assignment, they make significant difference in the lives of others. They leave a legacy of greatness and goodness. You know, because they are on assignment. People who are on assignment are what I call, oh, I think it's a long time since I we threw some of those big words. The people who are on assignment, they are teleological. Say after me, tell your logical. Tell your logical means a, a goal seeking, just like you have, you know, those hit seeking missiles. Somebody who is tell your logical, they, 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 they see the goal there and they are seeking the goal. They pursue the goal just like a hit seeking missile would do. So that is what God would do. People who are on assignment, they will say, I'll try this. When you hear the testimonies, oh, Deacon D says, you know what? I knew God has called us. So we tried this, it didn't work, but we didn't stop at it. We tried something else. What we're then doing is being tell your logical. It's seeking, it's a hit seeking missile. I know I'm going to hit the target, but I'm not going to stop. Most believers, they'll stop and they say, if it's of God, it's going to come. Listen to me, they don't do their they are not automatic. You see, you are a teleological being. You pursue the call of God. As you pursue, God will direct you and you, and you will change directions, but you are still pursuing. So that is what people who are on assignment will do. They will say, Lord, I'm going to move. I know you have called me yonder, and I'm going to be moving towards that place. I, I, mean, I may have a detour along the way, but I'm still pursuing. I'm like a heat-seeking missile. That's what teleological is. Romans 12, verses 1 to 3. Actually, 2 to 3, but I'll start at 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace of God given to me, to everyone who is among you, to think of him, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God 
has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 12 verse 4 to 8. For as many, for we have as many, we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So you have to understand that your assignment originates in the mind of God. And so your role is to discover that purpose in the will and the mind of God. That's why he says, you see, I want you to, to yield your bodies as living sacrifices that you may understand the perfect and good will of God. You see, when you do that, you pursue the purpose of God. And you say, God, my purpose, my assignment is to understand your purpose. So I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to follow you until you lead me to that place where I know that I have entered into my place of calling. But you see, while you are doing that, you need to understand that many believers, they begin to judge others on the basis of their assignment. You see, your assignment and my assignment are different. The way God leads you and the way God leads me are different. So don't judge me on the basis of your assignment. Don't think I'm not going anywhere because I'm not walking the path that you are walking. Because I am called to my own path. I need to pursue. I need to chart my own path. You, Some people have a direct route to, to others who will go via via until they get there. But you see, the important thing is that you are true to what God has called you to. So don't judge others on the basis of your assignment because your assignment and their assignment are completely different things. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. I think we are running out of time. So let's skip, 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 skip. Okay, First Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Let even when I have preached to others, I myself will be disqualified. So what are the principles of a pursuing an assignment? You see, we need to understand that we run our race with the winning in mind. I don't do, you know, I'm amazed at Christians. You say, you say, oh, what are you doing? He said, ah, I'm just trying. You say, no, no, you are not called to try. When you bite onto something, if you think it's the assignment of God, give it your all. Your mindset should be to win because the Bible says when we run, we run to win the race. It is the intention of God that you give your all to whatever you are doing because you are focused on winning. Hallelujah. And you see, we are running against God's plan for our lives, not that of other believers. In other words, you know, many people, they keep looking at others and say, you know what, while I'm running my race, you look into the other people's the person's strike and say, okay, how far am I from you? No, 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 you are not to compare yourself with others because you run according to the calling and the purpose of God. And so your eyes should be set on what God has called you to do, not what others are doing. I have seen so many believers, they say, ah, no, you can't be correcting me about this, but so and so is doing it also. No, 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 their race and your race are different. Your assignment is different. So you judge yourself according to your own assignment. Hallelujah. Not according to the assignment of others. But you see, in running this race, there is a need for self-control. There is a need for personal discipline. You see, there are things that you say, you know what, others can do this, but I'm not going to do it. Because when you look at athletes, there, there are things that, that others, everybody else can do. There are foods that others will eat, and they say, no, no, I don't do this. There are some movies that others may watch, and they say, I can't do this. Because I, am, I have self-mastery because of the assignment, there are things that God here will not allow me to do that he may allow others. But I don't go to God and say, God, but no, you are giving me a tough time. Others, you allow them to get it easy. No, that's not the issue. God is not interested in comparing you with the others. He is calling you for your assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, of course, we realize that there is a reward for successfully completing your race. Philippians 3, verses 12 to 15. Not that I have already obtained it. 
No, have I already been made perfect? But I actually actively press on so that I may hold that will for which Christ took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. And all of us who are mature should have this attitude. And if in any respect you have a different attitude, that too God will make clear to you. Now listen to this. You see, when Christ laid hold of us or apprehended us, he did it for an assignment purpose. So once you know that this is what I've been called for, you know that my, your responsibility is to lay hold of that assignment, that task, that mission for which Christ got a hold of you. And you say, I'm pursuing it. I'm laying hold of our future. So for us to lay hold of that future, I need to let go of the past and reach forward ahead. I press on to the prize of the high calling of God. I don't say, you know how, you know, in the 1980s we really saved God. No, 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 no. I am not focusing on the past. I am looking forward because the prize is ahead. There's no athlete who runs looking at the starting line. They fix their eyes on the finishing line. You see, laying hold of our destiny involves focus and exertion toward the mark that God has established for us. You see, achieving your destiny requires mature thinking. There are things that you are going to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to focus on that because I know what God has called me to. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 says, for we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again, again, Wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered us. For who is the, our hope or joy or our victor's wrath of triumphant celebration in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it not you? For you are indeed our glory and our joy. So Paul says, you know, a great and effective door of ministry has been opened to me, but there are many adversaries. He says, I wanted to come to you, Thessalonians. I knew that I have an assignment towards you so that I can present you before God. But he says, Satan hindered you. He hindered me. Do you know that people, demons, and circumstances may be assigned by hell to derail you and to hinder your assignment? You know, Peter almost hindered Christ in his assignment. Do you remember Peter saying, no, you don't have to go to the cross. May, may God, God forbid this cannot happen. He, he, he meant well. You, your loved ones, out of a desire to protect you, may hinder you from your assignment. They will tell you, are you so sure? You are going so far away from us. You are going to do this. I mean, do you really want to start this business? Do you understand what it means? They can talk you out of the call of God. They can talk you out of the assignment of God. But you need to understand that when you are a person who is called by God, who has an assignment, you have to understand that there will be obstacles. There will be hindrances. But you need to navigate past them. So to fulfill your assignment, you may have to undo the devil's assignments for you. Because the devil also has assignments that he has set out for you. You may think you are pursuing God when you are pursuing the devil's distractions. Assignments that he gives you so that you lose focus. Let's begin to land this plane. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 to 8. You see, Paul, remember he has said, I don't count my life to be more important. But I, I don't count it dear. I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I give it my all. I'm not intimidated. I'm focused on my assignment that I may finish the ministry that God has given me. Listen to Paul as he closes his life. He says, for I'm already being poured out, 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at the end, and I will soon go free. Verse 7, I have fought the good fight, the good and worthy and noble fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is a reserve for me, the victor's crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that great day, not only to 
me, but to all those who long and love his appearing. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have pursued the assignment of God. I have finished my race. I have kept my faith. Let, let me give you some closing thoughts. You see, success in pursuing the assignment of God is a whole lifetime of consistent running. You see, do not quit before the finishing line. Right. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Remember, we are teleological. We are goal-seeking. We pursue the call of God. You know, I, whenever I read Paul as he, as he talks about his life, I think about two souls. I think about Saul the king who was called by God. He had an assignment. He had, he had a good start. He started well. The Bible says he was head and shoulders above everybody else. Everybody looked at him and he says, wow, this is the man who is, who is, who is most likely to win. If people were to vote for someone who was most likely to win, they would have said Saul the king he is the guy who is most likely to win. But when Saul closes his life, he utters these sad words, and I pray to God, none of you who are hearing me, whether you're watching us online or you're right here at this ordinary, may these never be words that you'll be that you that will you utter out of your mouth. He says, when he's facing his death, he says, I have played the fool. I was called to pursue the assignment of God. But I played the fool. That's a sad indictment. The other Saul started murdering Christians. He was the most unlikely to win. But he had an encounter with the grace of God. And when he had that encounter with the grace of God, his soul transformed him to the point that he would say, I am what I am because of the grace of God. But listen to him as he checks out of this life. He says, I have kept the faith. I have run my race. I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight of faith. May you be able to say, Lord, in pursuit of your assignment, I'll be able to say, I have kept the faith. You know, as somebody who served in the army for 15 years, I, I, I always see the end of my life and I think, I want to be like Paul. I want to be able to say, when my life assignment is completed, I want to be able to gladly, like an old warrior, lay down my weapons, approach the throne of grace, and say, Lord, mission accomplished, purpose fulfilled, enemy exterminated, warrior now requests permission to return to home base. That's how warriors finish their course. I don't know about you, but my prayer is to say, Remember, he says to Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you. You don't want to be like Saul, the king, who says, I played the fool. You want to be like Saul, who became Paul, who says, I've run my race. I finished my course. Now awaits for me the victor's reward. Shall we all stand? I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. But I, I, I pray. I, I, I don't know how I can, I can bend this into your spirits. We, we are created as teleological beings. We, we are created as goal-seeking beings. We, 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 the goal that God created us for is to fulfill our, His purpose for us. So your life assignment is to pursue the fulfillment of that which he has deposited in you. 
If you raise your hands, I just want to pray. Father, I pray this morning very simply. Would you meet us here? Father, will you burn into our spirits your intention, your purpose, your assignment that we may live our lives with eternity in mind. That we may run our race with our eyes focused on the finishing line. May we be a people who have the tenacity to fulfill that which you have called us for. Father, may we never be those who will say, I have played the fool with my life. But may we be those who will say, Lord, I have run my race. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Father, I pray for every child of God under the sound of my voice. Father, may your grace be sufficient for them as they pursue the call of God. The, the, the journey there may be meandering. It may be progressive. They, they may struggle on the journey. But Father, may you help them. Father, may we not build museums on past victories. May we not build monuments on past battles. May we not settle and lick our wounds. But may we understand the call of God that there are some battles yet to be won. Father, I pray for Celebration Church. May we not settle. May we be a people who understand that there is a purpose, there is an assignment. Before this church was even established, you knew this church. You had an assignment. You had a purpose. Father, may we rise to the call of God. May we arise to the purpose of God. May we arise to the agenda of God. May we rise to the fulfillment of that for which you have called us. May we be a people who will be able to say, Lord, we have not been unfaithful. We have not been disobedient to that heavenly vision. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I will ask as we stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. You, you may be here and you are you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You, you can't say for certainty that your sins are forgiven you and you, you, you know that you are, when you die, you go to heaven. You, 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 you have not even started the race. You see, the best way to fulfill an assignment is to follow the, the, the manufacturer's manual. You see, if you live your life not in alignment with the creator, you are abusing your life. If you say, I'm not aligned with the creator, but I want to be aligned. The Bible says Jesus came to align us. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary so that he may bring those who had, who had wandered away, who had uh, wandered away from the grace of God and the, the glory of God and bring them back to faith. So if you're here this morning, whether you're watching me on Facebook, on YouTube, or you're right here in the auditorium, I want to pray for you that you may enter into that place of knowing that you, you are pursuing the assignment of God. That you have a relationship with God. That your sins are forgiven you. So with every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are here and you can't say with certainty that your sins are forgiven you and you know when you die you go to heaven. I want to pray with you. You can know. Your sins can be forgiven you. So I'll ask you to just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. If you want to have a relationship with God, you say, I don't know God in a personal way where I can say I have a relationship with Him. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'll ask you to raise your hand. And we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Shall we all pray this prayer, especially for you who are online, you're watching me and you want to enter into this relationship with God, with Jesus. 
Just pray aloud with me and say, Father God, I know I'm not an accident. I'm a product of the intention of God. I am here by the will of God. So Father, I come to you and I say, I may not, I may not have lived to your purpose. But today I repent. I want to live in accordance to your purpose. Will you forgive me? Will you heal my soul? Forgive my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Make me a child of God. Father, I believe that Jesus became man, died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, he rose again as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So I believe that Jesus is my Lord. And I call him, I invite him into my heart to, to become my Lord. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. Satan, I reject you with all that is yours. I will not be derailed from the assignment of God. But I choose to follow Christ and to pursue his purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. you prayed that prayer especially you who are watching us online and you made it from your heart there are contact details coming on your screen right now I want you to reach out to us so that we can help you when you prayed that prayer God heard you forgave your sins you started a journey of walking in Christ and we want to walk alongside you and help you so that you may pursue your assignment and finish it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. For our offering message, um, I'd like us to turn to 2 Kings uh, 4, verse 5 to 7. So this is a very popular uh, passage of scripture. Uh, it talks of Elisha and the widow uh, after um, <clears throat> the, the widow's husband died, uh, she went to the prophet and um, I think the story is popularly known as the woman in the jar of oil. My emphasis today, since it's a scripture that we all know, is um, from verse 5. <clears throat> so this is what it says. It says, so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They took the jars to her and she poured. So in my notes, I highlighted, I highlighted they took the jars to her and she poured. Verse 6 it says, When the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another. And he said to her, There is not one jar left. I was quite encouraged by the testimony of um, by the doers and the manumas. Their children were here. As they were doing the, the testimony, the children can actually see the journey that the parents have walked. So this is my encouragement from an offering point of view. The woman performed the miracle with the children. The, the children were passing the jars and the woman would pour. I'm trying to imagine how life was for the boy as he was growing up, facing challenges, remembering that I was with mom in the room and I was the one who was asked, pass me the next jar. And I said, there is none. Is this something that our children will say about our testimonies now? Is it something that we are leaving for generations to come? That's my, that's my encouragement this, this morning. Let's involve the children. 
as we are giving this morning, as we will give in the future. Let's involve them. This is not only to encourage you to give children offering money, given that I'm a children's, teach, um, children's church teacher. Yes, we would really, really love to, for you to give them offering. That would be very nice. But it's also a gift for generations to come. I would like to pray as we come and give our offering. Father, we thank you for you bless us. You bless the works of our hands. And this morning, Father, we are saying we will do this with our children. As we give testimony, we will give testimony with our children. As we live in inheritance for our children's children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I worked hard to rid myself of anxiety. Days and nights of sadness were a familiarity. I have known much grief, questioned it all. I tried to ease myself out of the grip of troubles, but still I was empty. I did not know peace. But God himself stepped into the mess I discovered Jesus understood my pain as he endured more than I could ever imagine. He carried the cross on his blooded back and with his arms open wide, he embraced death and rescued me. Through Jesus, I am reunited with God. Jesus took up the cross and set me free.